वेलकम बैक टू माई क्लास रूम दिस इज जस्ट इन टूडे एम गोर टॉक अबाउट फैक्टर अनालिस द क्लास ऑफ फैक्टर अनालिस विल बी डिवाइड टू टू सेक्शन फर्स्ट सेक्शन विल बी अबाउट द बेसिक लॉजिक ऑफ फैक्टर अनालिस एंड सेकेंड सेक्शन विल बी अबाउट द कॉन्सेप्ट स्पेसिफिक कॉन्सेप्ट रिलेटेड टू फैक्टर अनालिस सो एस अ साइकोलॉजी स्टूडेंट यू मस्ट बी डेफिनेटली फेमिलियर विद the term factor analysis hope you remember raymond cattell and 16 pf uh, yeah he has developed this many uh, 16 factors from around 2000 adjectives that means uh, he was reducing this 2000 adjectives to uh, 16 factors in different levels of factor analysis he proposed this method in uh, 1949 i mean this factors not the um, sorry Uh, the sixteen primary factors in nineteen forty nine, but before that itself, this method was introduced. So that also is a contribution of a psychologist. So the originally the factor analysis was proposed in nineteen zero four by um, Charles Spearman. Hope you remember this name also. the person who proposed two factor theory he wanted to find out the g factor so he was trying to uh, do factor analysis to find out a single uh, factor uh, which is uh, which can which has a capacity to explain many intellectual abilities so he proposed this method 1904 not 4 and um, 16 pf uh, 1949 like that these are the major contributors of this particular method so basically what is the concept of this um, factor analysis or the, log the logic of factor analysis this is primarily used for dimension reduction or data reduction or observation reduction um or it it has another purpose also like uh, uh, model building and all it's also generally used but we'll see what is this dimension reduction indicate look at uh, a scale the, let us say i want to measure religiosity and what i do is i have written down five statements to measure religiosity i pray every day i think about god um, whenever possible and thank god before sleep i go to church i follow uh, rituals if i give this items to a group of people let us say a big number of students a sample around um, 300 400 like that i would definitely get a pattern in this one that means these responses the the response these statements the response of the participants will be almost same and if i try to find out the correlation among these uh, three uh, statements and the correlation among these two statements i would definitely get a pattern like these correlations will be very high this correlation will be very high compared to the correlation of 1 with the 4 and 5 two with the 4 and 5 Uh, the correlation between one, two, three would be very high. So why these three statements may give a very high correlation? Because these three things are measuring similar kind of aspect. I'm calling this as a private religious practices, and here it is public religious practices. Okay, now this. Uh, this concept, the process that the logic that I have explained here, this is what doing in a factor analysis. So what is that? I found out a latent factor, a latent fact here. So why a person is praying every day? Because he has a, a private religious practice uh, element of religiosity within him. And why the person is uh, thanking, think about God every day, uh, every time? Because he has a private uh, religious practice element within him. So it's a latent factor, a factor which is responsible for this behaviors. Okay, so these are the observed behavior and a latent factor. One of the easy way to understand this is let us say uh, imagine about some behaviors like um, I have a lot of friends, I talk a lot, um, I go to pub, I go to parties like that. So some statements. Why a person uh, behave uh, in this terms like I have a lot of friends or I, I talk a lot? Maybe the person has an in, in, uh, internal quality or a, a kind of trait, maybe extraversion, because of that the person is behaving so uh, in that particular way. So the actual the behavior uh, is uh, observed behavior and the latent behavior whichever re the responsible for that particular uh, set of behaviors are uh, latent behavior so that could be an extraversion so what we try to do is we take all the behaviors and try to find a correlation and understand that these items are correlated they are highly uh, cohesive they, they, it's something like a cluster so we try to see what is the reason for this similarity what is the reason for the similarity so i reduce this five statements to uh, maybe possible two statements statement 1 and statement 2 it is a factor actually these are factors or latent factors so how did i reduce it for example 
I may make a little more broad statement like uh, uh, how do you rate your uh, private religious practices very good or very bad like that so this in one single statement replay can replace all these three statements okay now this one single statements like a statement like I uh, how do you rate yourself in terms of public religious practices can replace these two statements so the five statements were replaced by just two statements now this is how the Raymond Kettle has started from 2000 3000 adjectives and gradually reduced to uh, basically two factors so we try to understand what is the reason for a cluster a group of observation highly correlated kind of observation okay now this is how we reduced it there are different types of factor analysis basically they are um, one is exploratory factor analysis and second one is confirmatory factor analysis So what is exploratory factor analysis as a term indicates I am trying to explore what are the factors there. See that I am going to explore. For example, these are the statements I had. I don't know what are the factors behind it. I don't know what are the latent factors or what are the dimensions behind it. I am going to explore. So what I do, I will check for the correlations among all possible statements and whichever correlated, whichever forms a cluster, I try to find out as a uh, basically uh, factors. Now in the confirmatory factor analysis, that means I already have the factors there. So I know that these three statements represent private these two represent public now I will try to make sure that whether it's fitting properly so I will use a modeling kind of uh, pattern here for confirmatory factor analysis so when you do a, a generally when you do a um, scale construction we you first go for exploratory factor analysis if you do not have any theoretical background or you just want to know what are the dimensions behind it or otherwise you can go for a confirmatory factor analysis uh, after exploratory so even first you make an exploratory factor analysis then you uh, use the same statements to another population and make sure that what you got in the first population what are the factors that you got in the first population is also present in the second uh, population so that's a confirmatory factor analysis analysis so this is basically the concept of factor analysis okay so actually uh, we make a whenever we do factor analysis we generally make a mistake in this concept because uh, we uh, have a tendency to um, you know like misunderstand another near nearly similar kind of concept called as um, principal component analysis okay so uh, this is one of the usually well commonly discussed co uh, kind of controversy like uh, factor analysis and PCA principal component analysis actually PCA is not a factor analysis that's a very interesting part but generally we do this one uh, we'll see very detailed difference between factor analysis and PCA in the next video but I'm going to show a basic what is a what is these two things actually uh, measure or try to explain both methods are used for same purpose uh, dimension reduction so how do they do that one for example uh, in factor analysis you try to uh, uh, have a uh, observations like generally represented with the square like this so these are the observations okay and um, i say that okay these three observations are based on a latent factor one two three another two things are based on another latent factor like that so uh, this is latent factor factor one and factor two okay now you have different kind of behavior and there's an error attached to that one a e error here e what is this error you can see in the next video uh, and so this is how you do the generally the concept of factor analysis but when you do PCA this is not a method in the PCA what we do is we try to uh, make a linear combination so that means I have factors like observation 1 observation 2 observation 3 observation 4 observation 5 these are the items I have and from this I will try to see a linear combination here see that so this is not the product of uh, I mean this is a combination of these variables and another combination like this so both give you similar kind of uh, output but output is not the values uh, it give you it, it both can be used for same kind of purpose but this the logic of this one is completely different from this one so both are used for dimension reduction or data reduction that's an interesting part so this is how you differentiate this uh, factor analysis and PCA so this are not factors in PCA we don't get factors it's basically component I guess the most common reason for replacing this um, 
factor analysis with the PCA is when you do SPSS, that's an extraction method, factor extraction method. In that, uh, PCA is the first method by default method. So generally people use the default option that why PCA is very frequently used. So if you want to find out factors, see that latent factor, factor analysis has to be used. If you want to use uh, the, uh, if, you, if you want to work with the PCA and then component analysis, you can work with that also. Who proposes PCA? P PCA was proposed by um, Carl Pearson and that was a little bit more early 1901 this year PC was proposed principal component analysis these two things are two different logic itself I think you've got a kind of uh, understanding about what is the factor analysis okay so uh, so you the entire idea is extract the factors so the next class we will see what are the uh, different specific terms, specific uh, concepts related to factor analysis like factor loading, the um, eigenvalue, uh, communality like that. Okay, so we'll see in the next class. Bye.